Good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace and welcome to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'd especially like to welcome those that are joining us via Facebook this morning. Uh, for those that are worshiping at home, there is an order of worship that's available on our webpage for you to be able to follow along this morning. Now, let us prepare our hearts and our minds for this time of worship. Thank you so much. Wow, that, <laughs> that takes a lot to stand up there and do that, and especially on Mother's Day. And Tammy, I, I know you're, uh, you couldn't be more proud this morning. Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers, the mother figures, the, the mothers in our lives. We're just grateful for you this morning. Join me now for our greeting. It's a responsive greeting that comes from Psalm 98. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for the Lord has done marvelous things. 
God's right hand and holy arm have gotten the victory. The Lord has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell in it. Our opening hymn this morning, Praise to the Lord the Almighty.
Let's pray together our opening prayer. Loving, creative God, we praise and bless you for your mighty acts of creation. As we gather here this day, we hear your message of power and love through the witness of Jesus Christ as he prepared his disciples for his departure. He gave to them words of encouragement about living in your love and through that love being witnesses to the whole world of your peace and hope. Be with us this day, Lord. Open our hearts and minds to receive your word. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. And at this time, our centenary choir will share with us, You Are the Love.
Thank you so much, choir, for that beautiful piece of music you shared with us. At this time, I'll invite you to direct your attention to the overhead, and let's see where Amber is in the world this week for the children's time, and directly following that message, any children that are with us this morning that would like to go to the back for Children's Church are certainly invited to follow Miss Amber out of this door over here. Without any further ado, let's see where Amber is this week. everybody. Have you ever felt alone in a crowd of people? Maybe it's a group of people you see every day, but you don't really know or recognize any of them. They're all strangers to you, and it's kind of like they're wearing a mask, because if you ask them how they're doing or wave at them, they're probably just going to wave back and say, hey, I'm doing fine, I'm having a great day. But I don't think we should assume that everybody's having a perfectly normal, fine day, because that's just what they present to us on the outside. Chances are that the people you meet every day who seem to have it all together, or the ones who are kind of mean, probably are going through something really hard that they're just not telling anyone about. And they have hopes and dreams, and they're a wonderful, complex person that's just waiting to be discovered. But until you meet them, they're just a blank face. And as Christians, we're called to love everybody, Romans 12, 15 says, Be happy with those who are happy, and cry with those who are crying. Consider everyone as equal, and don't think that you're better than anyone else. I think what this would look like if we lived it every day is that we might spend the time to talk to the person sitting on the bus next to us, or in the pew right behind us or beside us, and get to know them, to celebrate the things they're happy about, and to be sad with them when things don't work out the way they'd hoped. Because, as the hymn says, they will know we are Christians by our love. Amber, thank you so much for all that you do for our children and, and all of us children in here as well. Amen. Join me now for our prayer for illumination. Blessed Lord, who calls all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first lesson this morning comes from Acts chapter 10, verses 44 through 48. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The epistle lesson is from 1 John 5, 1 through 6. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. 
and the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our gospel lesson this week comes from the Gospel of John, the 15th chapter, verses 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you my friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Please be seated. Let us pray. Loving God, we come this morning seeking to abide in your presence, to abide in your love. Open our minds to your spirit of wisdom like Solomon, that we may know you and know how to live as your people as Christ showed us. May this time be faithful and pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Almost two years ago, Marsh entered my life. Marsh. Marsh is an active, loving fun, spirited life, 110-pound black lab mix that follows me simply everywhere I go. A couple of summers ago, Jen and I were in a big transition period in our life. We were living in uh, Currituck, North Carolina, in Currituck County, in the town of Moyock, and we were moving from Moyock United Methodist Church to be with you good people here at Centenary. But our time up there had come to a conclusion, and we were doing some long, hard goodbyes. We were packing up uh, moving trucks, and we were moving out of that house in Moyoc to a house in Little Washington that Jen had been in for about 20 or so years. And so in the midst of trying to put two houses together, um, trying to move from one location to another, trying to say goodbyes as we're getting ready to say some hellos, we decided that we were going to just get away for a few days, take a week, go up to our beautiful mountains of North Carolina in the summer, cool off, and just enjoy some time away. Second day we were away, Jen gets a call from Cameron, her youngest, which is strange in itself. You see, they talk all the time, but not like this. They do it like this. You guys get that, right? The text. They text all the time, so... I saw her talking, and I said, who are you talking to? And Jen looked at me and said, Cameron. I said, oh, okay. Well, as we were riding, I was driving, and Jen's talking to Cameron, and I get to hear one side of a conversation. And I hear this. Oh, well, what happened to him? He's just a puppy? Is it a kill shelter? Oh, honey, I love you. I'll call you back. I'm going to talk to Michael for a minute. (laughs) 
All I could think to myself was, we've got a two-year-old Great Dane at this time. We're moving from one house to another. We don't have a fence at this new house for the dogs to run around. I mean, there's all these complications. And so Jen gave me a look, and I said, yes, we'll take the dog. <laughs> but with a few conditions, come on. No, Mar Marsh, by no fault of his own, brought that additional stress into my life, our lives. Um, everybody loves puppies, right? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Okay, I see some head nodding, that's good. Everybody loves puppies, but this one, this one was, had just a special annoyance about him. He wouldn't leave me alone. Marsh, Marsh is 110 pounds, okay? A black lab mix, it's 110 pounds. Average weight of a black lab is about 80 pounds or so. Marsh is very food motivated. When I walked in the house, when we were living in Washington, I'd walk in the house and, and Marsh would leave that food bowl that he left for nothing. But if I came in, he would leave, come love all over me, and then waddle his way back over to his ball. Sweet dog. His tail always wagging. This little guy just eventually, over time, wore me down. And I adore this dog. I ride around with this dog. He's actually been in this building, not in this particular room, but in our, in our, in, up in my office when I had to come in and get some stuff in the evenings. This dog loves to follow me everywhere I go. I'll kick the soccer ball around. I kid you not, for two or three hours, this dog won't stop for a water break. Do any of you have dogs that will chase carpenter bees and kind of bite at them? Nobody else has a dog that chases bees. Really? Okay, all right, I see a couple. This dog doesn't chase the bees or jump at the bees that are flying around him. He follows the shadows around and will chase the shadows around the yard of the bees. <laughs> Strangest dog in the world. Love him to death. He is so obedient to me. He loves me. He'll wake me up in the morning. He'll come into my room with his 11-inch tongue that looks like Gene Simmons from Kiss, and he'll start kissing me on my face. God has a sense of humor. Amen? <laughs> this dog has an abiding spirit and a love that is simply unparalleled. And it makes me wish that I could be more obedient in my life towards God like I've seen this dog towards me. Not blindly, but in that true abiding type of way. The way that seeks more. The way that wants to do more. The way that wants to serve more. The way that wants to please more. The way that wants to love more. The way that wants to experience more. The way that wants to breathe in God more deeply in myself and breathe out more God deeply by my actions in the world. Amen? I wish I knew how to be more obedient like this. Our gospel lesson, though, starts with the words this morning. It says, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. When you first read that, abide in my love, God has loved me, so I love you. It makes us kind of get these warm tingly, these warm fuzzies all over us. We remember these things like, yes, Jesus loves me, and God is love. But I think, as right as those words are, I think we must consider all of the ways that God loves Jesus. How does God love Jesus? Well, our first encounter with Jesus is that God sent him out of the heavens, a reality full of bliss and wonder and imagination and, and things we can't even comprehend, and sends him down to this world full of pain and difficulty, suffering, loss. As a baby, Herod tried to kill him, forcing Mary and Joseph to find safe passage and ways to keep Jesus safe. We, re we read in the Gospels that Jesus is sent into, well, into the wilderness for 40 days and nights, difficult days and nights, on a spiritual journey that is complete with fasting from all food, all drink, all nourishment, other than prayer. And as it nears completion, Jesus is tempted in a most profound, unusual, tempting way. God loved Jesus by pressing him into conflict with the super pious and with the violent politicians and bureaucrats 
who plotted to put an end to him, an end to his life. And God loved him by encircling him around a bunch of friends who were knuckleheads. They just didn't get it. And an extension of friends who were quite simply folks that most of us would not hang out with after, after work on a Friday evening. They never got what he was about. And they ran for the exit when Jesus could have used a few friends. They never got what he was about. How did God love Jesus? Peril at every turn. Demons to be cast out. The sick pulling on him. Crowds pressing. A woman yanking on the hem of his garment. No, room, no roof over his head. And then the worst conceivable possible end that we could imagine. Instead of Jesus saying, love me as the Father has loved you. Abide in my love. I think we wish Jesus would have said something more like, as the Father has loved me, I'm not going to love you in that same exact way. I'm not going to make you deal with all of what I went through. I'm going to love you differently. I'm going to give you a paradise now. I'm going to make life easy. But no, it seems that Jesus' words of love are just like the words of love that God gave to Jesus. And if we abide in his love, we may lose the roof over our head. We will face evil people. People will wrinkle their brow and be puzzled by us, by our weirdness. And we won't get ahead in the world. We will be catapulted into serving in daunting places if we are following the will, the abiding will of Christ. It's hard. It's unfathomable. It's something you have no ability to pull off. But you go. And you know that the one that is there loving you has been here too. And there's others on this journey, this abiding journey of love with us. They're sitting around us this morning. Love is an intriguing thing, isn't it, folks? After these weeks of having it driven into our head and into our hearts, John's gospel points us right to the core truth of life as he recounts the last words that Jesus offers the disciples. These words of Christ are paramount above anything else you've ever heard or ever will hear in your life. What's revealed is that everything is about abiding in Christ's love. Everything in this world, everything of this world, and everything outside of this world. Jesus' last words he offered to his disciples about abiding in God's love. Maybe it offers us a glimpse into last words and, and how they might be a statement of a person's faith or a statement of a person's being. Bob Hope, his last words were this. When Bob Hope was dying, he, his wife spoke to him and asked where he wanted to be buried. His final words surprised me. <laughs> John Adams, the second president of the United States, on a 4th of July morning, he woke and said, Oh, yes, it's a glorious 4th of July. It's a great day. It's a good day. God bless it. God bless you all. Then he lapsed into unconsciousness. And he awoke several hours later and mumbled the words, Thomas Jefferson. Unbeknownst to him, Thomas Jefferson had actually died several hours earlier. John Adams died after he said Thomas Jefferson's name. Both died 50 years after signing the Declaration of Independence to the date. Joe DiMaggio, speaking of his former wife, said, Finally, I'll get to see Marilyn. Seconds before he died, Pope John Paul uttered the word, Amen, from his papal apartment. And finally, our church's founder, John Wesley, is noted for saying, as his last words, the best of all, God is with us. The last things that people say, every one of these quotes can be deciphered and picked apart. But rest assured, when we get into the meat and potatoes of all of these, I think it stands true to each of these people's characters, from 
from Bob Hope ending his life with a joke to our founder living his life and dying in a testimony. Jesus offers these directives to his disciples and to the world. It follows that memorable passage about Jesus being the vine and us being the branches and, and being connected and outreaching and stretching out. But here, rather than just simply talking about abiding in each other, Jesus takes our relationships to the next level, to a deeper level, if you will. Jesus offers up this idea of our serving each other in our genuine giving each other love, agape type of love. In fact, nine times in the verses that, um, that were shared this morning in the gospel, nine times the word love is spoken. There's little doubt to the central message that Jesus wants to convey to us. It's as if Jesus is saying that we are to be in a constant state of communion with one another. Communion, it's a depth of spiritual love and truth in a concrete way. Communion together, being together, is what shapes our identity as the body of Christ. Like the original 12, and as the body of Christ, we're on the same team. There's enough part people in the world who are mean, who are vicious, who are cruel, and who continually resort to violence and unspeakable acts as, as the way that they are. But for us, friends, we have a mission. And to be dealing with those things, life is just too short. We are on a mission, and we are on a long mission. It's a lifelong mission. Even in times of discontent or discord, we are to love one another. And when we love each other, we can usually find solutions to most of the things that creep into our lives. When we love others in the way that Christ has instructed us to love, our faith becomes stronger. And the stronger our faith becomes, the more willing we are to offer ourselves in the establishing and rebuilding the kingdom of God here on earth. When we love each other as we as disciples are called to, we fulfill the second of Jesus' two greatest commandments. Do you remember? Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with your mind, your strength, and love one another. Disciples of Jesus are required and commanded to build grace-based communities of joy and forgiveness that abide in love. Having been made in God's image, we have been chosen by God for the purpose of bearing much fruit. And such personal characteristics as love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and indeed self-control. Jesus is the vine, and we are the branches. As we grow, the love of God grows. Every time we show others the love of Christ, through our love and through our generosity, we are spreading the love of Christ, and we are transforming the world. May it be so. Amen. Our song, Yezu, Yezu.
Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church whose holy and apostolic faith now let us declare. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived from the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, and descended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall judge, quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. For those worshiping with us this morning at home, there is a QR code in the order of worship for you to be able to participate in giving. Uh, for those who are here with us this morning, we are still not passing the plates at this time, but there are, um, there are offering plates out in the narthex on your way out this morning. Uh, now let us prepare our hearts and minds as we get to hear a beautiful piece of music this morning as we offer ourselves to God and we offer our gifts for the ministry of Jesus Christ. Oh, oh, oh. 
As we move into a time of sharing our joys, concerns, praises, prayer requests, uh, I'll share with you that Rita McCain had a heart catheterization on Friday and is expecting surgery in two weeks. Uh, Rama had a successful surgery. Is Rama over there? Oh, okay. <laughs> she did have a successful. I miss Rama that sings in our choir did have a successful eye surgery this week. So, loving God, we give you thanks for that. Uh, friends of the Sykes, uh, we we want to share that um, that we want to lift up one of their friends. If I can read my writing for a minute, the Hughes family um, who is facing a difficult battle uh, back in their hometown. Uh, also, prayers for Brian Janae, who attends our 8.30 service. Brian has been here in the hospital this week, and apparently he's been moved uh, to Violent. They were hoping to move him to Duke sometime this week, to, just for some additional observations uh, to, um, to watch over him. But he is at Violent in Greenville now. And also, prayer, or, uh, uh, praise for uh, God's watching over our newest, one of our newer members, Clyde Shell, who had surgery this week, who was here at our earlier service and continues to recover well. Do we have any other praises, joys, concerns to share this morning? Paul. Uh, I believe I'm correct in saying this, that uh, Tammy and Alec Newton are celebrating 17 years. And Tammy, we've missed not having you in the choir this morning. We know your throat's a little under the weather, but it was a joy to have Tucker uh, singing this morning and, and, for you, and to be able to watch you uh, enjoy that. Uh, do we have any others? wonderful work that you and so many uh, on, on this team here do with Oaks Road uh, Academy and, um, and work with those teachers. I also do want to uh, mention that this week there was some love outpoured here for, the, for our uh, pr uh, preschool teachers as well. So just thankful for the preschool teachers and the preschool ministry that we have here at Centenary. Judy. Yeah. Uh, 19 years ago, our congregation welcomed four Vietnamese men, and I just hope that we will set them up on the week of the 6th or Saturday in June. He who, who left his family, two children uh, that are three and 11, and his wife, who speaks very little English, and continue to be the family that they should be. Thank you, Judy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Are there others? Let's go to the Lord for a time of prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks for this day, for all days. We are so thankful to be surrounded by a community of love and those that wish to love us more. Open our hearts each and every day to be more receptive to your love, but not only to be receptive to it, but to be able to pour it out to others around us that we know and those that we haven't yet met. 
Lord, we are called to love each other while we're here with the kind of love that Christ displayed. Patient, respectful, strong. Our world would have us believe that love's an emotion which is manipulative. We love in order to get what we want. How sad that thought is. We are called to a higher understanding and we are called to a higher love. Love must take the form of service and compassion, of hope and proclamation, of patient waiting and urgent striving for the good of all people. So Lord, open our hearts this day and imprint your message of love upon us that all we say and all we do may be in your name and for the sake of your people and your world. May we indeed be a part of bringing heaven to earth. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And we pray together now as one congregation as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Pray. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Our closing hymn is Blessed Assurance.
these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these, friends, is love. Let us go out there and share it. Willy, freely, and openly this week with all we meet. In Jesus' name, the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.